Today we are going to do some translation of Famicase cards. Hi everybody, I'm Christian and welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. And today we are going to look at some more um, Famicase cards and I brought a friend. Hi Raiko, how are you doing? Hey Christian, thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. So Raiku is a translator in Japan. Or something of the sort. Close enough. Close enough. You're translating games from what I understand. Is that true? Uh, I work in localization. That's right. That's right. So he is an expert and he will guide us through some of the cards in the Famicase exhibition that might be not completely understandable for Western audiences. So to so everybody's on the same page, there is this exhibition in Japan where they create fake cards of Japanese um, NES cartridges and of course it's a huge inspiration for game designers to create games according to those cards. But also of course there is a one every year there is a um, game jam, the a game by cover game jam where you are specifically tasked to create games according to those cards. Hey, so Christian from the future here. While we were editing this episode, the game jam we were talking about here, the A Game By Its Cover game jam, has actually already started, so check out this website to join the game jam this year. And some of the cards of we obviously are created by Japanese people, and it might be difficult to understand what the heck is going on, right? <laughs> So we're gonna go through some of the cards where that might be not completely understandable. Um, some of the cards already uh, mentioned in the last video. The last video was about my favorite cards, but these are kind of like cards that um, that we're gonna try to get behind, understand completely. It's not just um, uh, as always within localization. It's not just translation, but also kind of like understanding cultural differences and so forth. And I think Raiku, a good start is gonna be uh, a card that I talked about because it's one of my favorite cards this year, Yogurt Lady Raiku. What? So I we, we shown we've seen a picture of a lady of a Japanese lady on a on a little bike and and having a yogurt in, in her 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 back. Is that something that is uh, happening in Japan? This is an actual thing. Oh my gosh, this is I haven't great. seen it a ton myself. <laughs> okay. But every time I have seen it, I've had this like head tilt <laughs> moment of what is going on here? Um, I'm not super familiar with it, but as far as I can tell, just based on how much luggage she's carrying, <laughs> a deliver yogurt. Is, is that like a pizza where you're like, do, 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 do. hello, I want to have like five tons of yogurt delivered to my... Or is that something like, you know, you've been solicited, uh, like people like... My personal imagination is that it's more like a vitamin delivery service. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have these tiny little yogurt drinks. Really tiny. They're like one gulp. And... Yogurt in Japan is at least very different from yogurt in the U.S. Um, yogurt in the U.S. is uh, it has a more solid consistency, um, but in Japan it's much more liquidy. Mm. Uh, so you very so you can like drink it almost. Term. Yes, drinkable yogurt. Mm. Um, so they have these tiny little containers of it, and I think like part of the the advertising idea is that it's supposed to be healthy for you yeah of course it's yogurt exactly it's it's it's, it's, it's your, like in america because you're also from america right is, i am is that's that, correct is, 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 is that not a thing in america where yogurt is considered healthy um it's not considered unhealthy to my knowledge <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, because like in in Germany, I was really confused because I know Yakult. That's like like ah. a brand that's very famous in Germany, and wow. um, and pe Germans are also obsessed about yogurt. Right? Like my girlfriend, like just just today, my my girlfriend ate like bananas in a in a bowl of yogurt as as breakfast. Oh, that sounds that, delicious. That's her cereal, basically. That sounds so and, good. Yeah, it's it's. I mean. I wouldn't eat it, but it's it's, <laughs> it's a thing that happens, and, and so and, you, and yogurt is always associated as this like you know uh, is mana from heaven. You know, there's like this 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 mm. godly, uh, beautifully like it heals. It's like a mana potion, basically. It's, it heals you inside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, okay. that brand yeah. Yakult, it, mm. very very common in Japan. In the yeah, US, uh, I, I actually have... had Wikipedia it. It's it's, it's from ah. Japan. Yeah, in the U.S. we have YoPlay. 
Mm. <laughs> yo play. Yo play. And it looks like yo plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your plate. Um, okay, so this is a thing, and delivery ladies, uh, like yogurt delivery ladies in Japan are a thing. We're not quite sure if this is like a pizza order kind of situation or. <laughs> Or um, uh, I, I guess in Japan, you, they wouldn't just go from door to door, right? Oh, God. But, Are they like Tupperware salesmen? Yeah. But I don't, I, they wouldn't they, I, like, Ooh, isn't that I it. considered I rude in Japan to just like Ooh. ring the bell? You know, I, I have never seen it. I've never had mm. it happen to me. I can mm. say that much. Okay. Okay. Have you? You should try, like an experiment. You probably should try the, the delivery lady. Maybe. <laughs> maybe you're missing out on something. Uh, all right, um, l l let's move on to the next one. Um, so the next one is going to be Naruto. Can you explain? Like, for, first of all, uh, it's kind of like for a foreigner, it's kind of difficult to, to even read it because like two Japanese character and then Thorn. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the uh, hiragana Neru. Uh, mm -hmm. at the front, followed by Thon, so kind of like Marathon. Mm -hmm. um, but Neru means to sleep. And mm -hmm. if you look at the picture, everybody's passed out underneath a kotatsu, or kind mm -hmm. of a, a heated table with a blanket that you stick your legs under. Or most of yourself, if you're like the one in the bottom right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the subtitle for this game so it's uh, it's kind of like sleeping marathon champion sleeper. Mm. That, that sounds. I'm not a. I'm not a sporty kind of person. But that some sounds like a like a competition I might be good at. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you see the uh, the cat sleeping under Yukotatsu as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have some friends in Japan with cats and a kotatsu, mm. and. Mm. They have two cats, and both of them love hiding under the kotatsu. I mean, it sounds like a paradise for a cat. So maybe uh, because also that's some, something that is uh, I wasn't familiar until I went to Japan. So what is a kotatsu? A kotatsu is really just a low table. Um, you sit on the ground and stick your legs under the blanket. And in the middle of the table on the, uh, the bottom side, um, there is a heater and you actually plug this thing into the wall and you turn it on and it will get warmer underneath the blanket. But just on, like, it's just, it's just like warming your, uh, your legs basically while they're under it. Right. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, is that like, don't they have heating in Japan? Um, Technically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, so Japan, for the most part, to my knowledge, is not big on central air. Um, so for me in my apartment, I have a wall unit, as I always call oh, it. I don't actually know what you're really supposed to call these things. Um, but it is just this big block up on my wall. <laughs> Like and, an AC, but in the reverse, so to speak. Well, I can change it to AC or heat or dehumidifying. It does it does three things at the same time. It must be so good. <laughs> um, but you don't want to use it a lot. Ah, because it takes a lot of energy, right? Because it's very expensive. Um, so if you want to keep your heating bill down, or uh, excuse me, your electricity bill down, mm. You only turn it on when you cannot handle it anymore. <laughs> oh, no. So you're just sitting there in like the most humid room you've ever been in. And you're like, I can still take it. You will not take me down. Is this already the worst or can I go even further than that? <laughs> That uh, seems like a completely different type of marathon that, that you yeah. could also make, <laughs> make yeah. a card about. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I really, really love uh, this cartridge. Um, up in the top that, right, you will yeah. actually see... Um, so there's like a little tiny uh, kind of yellowish block with black text in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I am reading this right, it's quite tiny. Yeah. Um, I think instead of saying Nintendo 
or a mm. Nintendo. It mm. says Kintendo. Mm. So it just switches the first kanji in Nintendo to Kin uh, or gold. Ah. And next to that in blue, um, a lot of the cartridges uh, for this Famicase do this. Um, yeah. So instead of saying uh, like family computer, so family computer, yeah. they say something else. And in this case, it's fake or fake computer. Ah, good details. I also noticed like there is the you know, Hatsoft B logo thing uh, happening there as well. Like just lots of little logo details as well on the, on the bottom left. Yeah, the Oki Oki Soft. Yeah. Yeah, I am not entirely familiar with these, sadly. And that little bug to the side looks so familiar. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a it's, it's, it's a logo from, from Hatsoft. I think Hats, Hudson, Hudson Soft. There's, there's like a company Hudson that, that uses Soft. this logo. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. That was bugging me so badly. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 good. There's there's lots of le there's lots of also like the illustration. There's so the the cat. Funny enough, is playing Famic Famicom, mm -hmm. and the lady who pass out on the bottom right is also playing Famicom. <laughs> so they were playing together with the cat, which is pretty amazing for that cat to be able to handle this kind of dexterity with boss. Uh, uh, there's also like everybody has the anime uh, snot bubble coming out of them. <laughs> yeah, the sleeping snot, which is apparently a thing that some people do, maybe. Wait a minute, all four people are playing Famicom, I just realized. Yes, yes, all four of them have a controller. Two of them are on the yeah, table yeah. Uh, yeah. near the bowl of uh, Mikam or Mandarin Oranges, which is a mm -hmm. really, really popular uh, fruit. Uh, mm -hmm. as a snack in Japan. Mm -hmm. And what is the on thing on the very right? The very right, the little rectangle? Yeah. That, I believe, is... Uh, I'm fairly confident that that is supposed to be a remote for uh -huh. their wall unit. Ah. So for the AC or the heat. Mm -hmm. Or maybe for the Naru. How do you turn on and off the Naru? 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 Wait a minute, is it Naru? Kotatsu? No, the Kotakatsu, yeah. <laughs> the Kotatsu um, has, on the ones that I've seen, it, so it has a cable that you plug into the wall for power, and uh -huh. somewhere on that cable, it has a switch. Ah, okay, so it's like a lamp or something. Yeah, exactly uh -huh. like that. And so and when I was, um, we were staying in Japan for, for um, in, actually in Kyoto um, for a while, and there was a, we were at the lady's house and she had like turned it into like a, like a little a hostel basically. And we were eating with her downstairs always every, every morning, like a breakfast. And she had like this, this, this uh, kotatsu there. And it was, it was, wow. it's weird because it's like the blanket is built into the table itself. Um, I believe... In most cases, it's actually that you lay the blanket on top and then you oh. put the solid surface portion on top of that. Ah, so you can like sandwich the blanket between, because yeah. it, it was firmly attached to the table. You couldn't like, it wasn't, yeah, it's. Yeah, mm. I think you can separate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, probably you should because then you're eating there and it's possible to get like some dirt on it probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll need to wash the blanket at some point. Or if you have yeah. cats, you will definitely need yeah. to wash the blanket. Yeah. Seems good. Have you ever fallen asleep in a, in a kotatsu? Ooh, uh, I don't think so. I have re relaxed and rested my eyes. <laughs> I have never fallen asleep asleep. Okay, okay. It's risky, though. It's, it seems like it's a, it's a very dangerous place to... to... It can be. You gotta hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a sport in itself. So yeah, it's a sleep yeah. competition. The Naru, Naruto Neru Neru Neru. Ah, see, I'm I'm not so good with my my hiragana. No worries. Um, uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. All right, <laughs> moving on to the next one. The next one is going to be a number thirty three. Not working. Oh, this one's so good. So good. Okay, so um, if uh, let, so, I have also the translation here, so I can read the Google translation, and let's see if the Google translation can uh, can uh, tell us what what's happening here. So March twenty sorry. March twenty one year old job hunting mid two thousand nineteen concept is that it's not done to you. Do 
not want to do what based the haze of emotions that are not found in society. <laughs> Entry sheets and company briefs, even while avoiding the storm, the interview, the man who is recognized around. Job hunting rejection simulation game. The current uh, of state of mind was bumped to this Famicase exhibition. As somehow in our many months, you have a human smell. <laughs> Myself have thought that a good... Oh, okay, never mind. It's, <laughs> it's something along these lines. <laughs> Oh, okay, no. <laughs> so it's, it's it's somebody's job hunting. That's a, a, uh, what I got from it, and there's um, some emotions associated. Oh God! Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, um, it's this 21 year old guy uh, mm -hmm. or girl who mm -hmm. is trying to get a job, really not motivated for it, not feeling the whole process of it in japan mm. and it is a grueling process um mm. i've done it myself i have interviewed other people um and it's a very different beast from what you have in the u.s at least um it's very very rigid um everything is kind of decided ahead of time mm. like the format for things um and that's what we see in the image on mm -hmm. the cartridge itself. Uh, so on the top left, the bold uh, kanji, the Chinese characters there, it just mm -hmm. says uh, resume. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look down a little bit more, you'll see not working in mm -hmm. the space for your name. <laughs> 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 and above that, it's where you're supposed to write the reading or the pronunciation of the kanji that you would write if you were uh, a, an average Japanese person. Um, but there, instead, it just says, Hatarakanai, not working in Japanese. Uh, so below that, you have the date of birth, the, uh, the current... Wait, so the, the person was born on the 1st of, 1st of 1998? January 1st, 1998 making that person 21 years old. Oh my gosh. I, I just like, dude, sometimes you get some of those flashbacks where it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's 2019 already and I'm so old. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I had a moment of panic when I looked at this and I was like, 98, what is this guy, 10? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, that's what I just thought. I was like, wait, that, that, what kind of date is that? That couldn't be 21. <laughs> <laughs> You're not old enough to go job hunting. Go out time play. <laughs> oh gosh this is the worst so to the right of that you just have you know select your your gender um mm -hmm. and a little below that where it says home um home is actually what they wrote for their address <laughs> <laughs> and that's good this would also be something written in kanji or those chinese characters um mm -hmm. And so it's very typical that everything like that on uh, official forms in Japan, you have to write the pronunciation as well above it. Yeah. So we see in kanji and hiragana there, shiawase. And that mm. just means happiness. <laughs> oh. So it's home. And it's like mm. equals happiness. Oh, it's so good. Like, I don't want to work. I just want to be right here at home. I, I'm just going to veg out. Just want to be happy. I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to be in a society. Yeah, <laughs> I could not figure out if there was any sort of significance to the numbers below for the uh, home phone number on the left and the uh -huh. cell phone number on the right. There's there's a probably there's like two possibilities. Either somebody just bumped their head into the keyboard and it's like <laughs> <laughs> that does it, or there's actually some personal significance that we can't decipher. Probably. Yeah. Um, what is the box on the upper right? I was just thinking about talking about that. That is where you um, attach a photo of yourself because in Japan, oh. you I think you pretty much have to put a photo of yourself. In the US, it is, I think, illegal for employers to require that or to actually get one at all. I'm not clear on the specifics, but in the US, you don't put photos. In Japan, yeah. mm. you put mm -hmm. a photo. In Germany, you also would put photo in. Ah, in the U.S., I think it's 
some sort of anti-discrimination kind of thing. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Japan's not super worried about that, I guess. Yeah, Germany apparently ne neither. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so apparently somebody's job hunting, and then while they were job hunting, they created this card maybe to to kind of like yes. convey their situation. Exactly. Exactly mm -hmm. that. Um, when I look at this, I feel stressed. Oh, okay. <laughs> because you associate these kinds of forms with with stress. With trying to get a job and being oh, stressed man. out. Oh man. Oof. <laughs> and jumping through all the hopes that you have to. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I, I do not share those emotions because this specific form is, doesn't trigger them, but I do definitely have those emotions with other types of forms for sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right, good. Uh, moving on to the next one. This is actually one that I can actually read. Uh, so this is going to be 42. There's so many good ones here. There's good ones. This is actually uh, was, um, uh, I think it was highly rated and they had like an internal ra um, competition of what's the best card of the show this year. And this one scored highly in this internal thing. Uh, so this is something I can actually read. Uh, so it says Roboto Genai. Mm -hmm. Which you know means I'm not a robot. Exactly. <laughs> it actually says there in very small, it says this also <laughs> hey, in, in the top right corner. But hey. From the Japanese, it's okay. <laughs> but I was like, you know, learning Japanese, and which I'm doing over a couple of years now, mm -hmm. is, is a very gruesome process because there's a lot of like steps that you need to get done before you get to the next step, before you eventually get to understand what's happening. Because mm -hmm. there's like multiple... Uh, font systems like multiple um, writing systems and you have to get them first before you can start reading stuff before you can start learning the vocabulary yep. and so every time you can read something it seems like a little like a, yes i did it i understood something yes <laughs> you know what's really funny and also really depressing at the same time mm -hmm. even when you get much much better at japanese you'll still come across kanji that you haven't seen before yeah. and you just get yeah. the reading and meaning and sometimes you get it right and you still have that really amazing i did it feeling yeah yeah it's 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 a gift that keeps on giving <laughs> um but yes uh this cartridge this yeah. design yeah it's so good it just it's good everything on this it's so repetitive mm -hmm but in so many different little ways of saying the same thing. Um, mm. Mechanic genetic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you have the, uh, the smartphone in the middle being held up mm. by obviously robotic hands. Robot hand. And on the screen is a captcha. So you have to prove that you're human. Yeah, you, we know all familiar with these where you have to click on the little checkbox to prove yes. that you're not a human. Um, and right next to it, it says, I am not a robot. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything on here basically says that mm. it says it up at the very top in black it says it just below in the main logo i'm not a robot uh, in the bottom right you have mechanic janai so i am not yeah. mechanical mechanic yeah um and above that with that little checkbox uh -huh. um it says ningen da 2019 ningen da uh -huh is one way of it's saying human. I am a person. Oh my gosh, I just got it. Yeah, Ningen means human and Da means is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. And so Ningen Chao is the same? same? Yeah, it's all basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just all these different ways of saying I am human, I am not a robot. <laughs> Oh God, no! <laughs> but then you see the robot hands so clearly, yeah. or maybe not. You don't know. I mean, it depends on how far you want to uh, dig into this. I guess maybe robots will one day be human enough. Sometimes you know you fail the capture, and it it always gives me pause when I do that. Wait a minute, <laughs> you did it just missed like a baguette somewhere, or or maybe. <laughs> Oh my god, I wish it asked me for baguettes. I'm so sick of streetlights. Yeah, it's usually street lights or, or crossings or cars. Mm -hmm. But I know I, I think I got the baguette because there was like this captcha once where it's like, uh, is it a baguette or like a Pomeranian? <laughs> what? And it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was like like you know, close-ups of Pomeranians and close-ups of baguettes, and it's just like orange texture basically. <laughs> it was sometimes oh difficult. <laughs> 
so this yeah. could be actually we're already developing the game here by the way right so it's gonna be it's gonna be like at the beginning it's like you pick the street lights and then you will you start it, it start getting more and more crazy and then suddenly it's like you know just like a, like like a squares of of one colored uh, like green green squares basically and you have to pick you know if is this is this Kermit the frog or um or I don't know, a sweet light. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's good. It's good. Youth. Um, so next one is going to be forty-seven. So what is happening here? Okay. Well, something, something. Cat, right? Put correct. Cat. <laughs> mm. Before I dive into that, I actually wanted to point out, kind of like in the uh, the sleeping marathon one. Um, mm. In the top left, it has that GRB 001. Ah, that's right. Yeah. But mm. next to that. It says instead of family computer, family ne computer. So uh, instead of computer, it says ne computer. And the word for cat in Japanese is neko. Uh, ne computer. Uh, chef's kiss. So, so they it's keep, like a cat computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cat, keep cat. sneaking in these little things. It's a cat pewter. <laughs> Um, I feel like Japanese is such a good language to make puns and like word plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, one of the reasons that I really like this one so much is because it's so contemporary. Mm. Um, so you have this cat who has a smartphone for some reason and can walk around on its hind legs also for some reason. It's um, a modern cat. Don't yeah, question him. He's walking around town. He's not looking where he's going. He's looking at a smartphone screen. Um, and they actually talk about this in the description. The goal of this uh, hypothetical game is you have to send the cat hints and <laughs> like instructions <laughs> on the smartphone so that he can it's reach good. the goal. So in other words, to keep him from crashing into things. Yeah. And this is actually, uh, I don't know if I would say it's a hot topic, but it's a topic these days. In Japan? In Japan, because a lot of oh. people walk around all the time looking at their phones. I mm. do it too now. Uh -oh. um, here's the funny thing, though. I didn't even think to do it until someone was like, hey, don't do this thing. <laughs> and now I do it all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, um, I, but they, I can imagine, especially in Japan, this being really dangerous because there is, people are walking at such high speeds and the density of people is so high. Yep. And trains. Yeah. Um, it's actually very common to see messages at train stations saying, don't look at your cell phone while you're walking. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this is, um, Aruki Smaho Cat. So Aruki is walking Smaho is smartphone um and cat uh, is nickel <laughs> ah so so this this looks like poto but it's actually not actually yes uh, western characters it's 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 whole correct the, the, uh, the, it's very stylized whole. it's very stylized character very. so it's uh, even if you know the japanese characters and it's it, to me it's like i see the key and mm -hmm. I see the whole now that I saw it, but like, oof, yeah. that's, that's a rough one. Yeah. Um, I just love this cat. It's good. It's a good cat. I like his eyes. He is cracked out on smartphones. Definitely. Uh, so it's, it's good. also funny like to have like a character that's very awkward to control. I was thinking of, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with um, uh, getting over it, the getting ah. over it game, right? I'm familiar with the name. I don't know too much about it. Okay, so it's well, like part of these games, which I like to call um, the fumble core games, <laughs> where, <laughs> where the idea is that um, it's you do something simple, mm -hmm. but you do it in the most awkward way possible. And the, <laughs> the challenge of the game is like it's struggling with the controls rather than than anything else in this game. So um, okay. a, a well-known game is like Surgeon Simulator. Where it's like you're doing the surgery, which is not actually a very simple simple thing. It's a very complicated thing, but it makes this may, being made even more hilarious by having like the most awkward and most f flimsy controls. So you <laughs> do, do, 
uh, exact inspiration word that requires precision and and calm hands yeah. makes you like you know hands flip out and and do physicy stuff and <laughs> uh, getting over it is exactly the same thing where you are a guy sitting in a pot and you have a hammer and you have to climb a mountain <laughs> yeah i you know i might actually have it on steam and i've just it's never good. tried it's you should try it it's good it's a good way to, to completely uh, uh flip out and and destroy your computer about <laughs> You know, and I so it seems that. like a, maybe like a similar game where it's like you have a character and you're you try to control him and try to stop him from bumping into things. But the way you do it is you have to actually you know spill it out or something like writing him an SMS message or like a text message. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watch out, Neko! It's something. Oh, it's too late. <laughs> What now, cat? It's another cat. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so let's move on to the next one, which to me is a huge mystery. Number 81, Madori Craft, also scored highly in the internal internal contest. Okay. So, um, hmm. Hmm. You know, what I is a Madori? I did not notice the, uh, the part up in the top left where it mm -hmm. makes a, a play on family computer. Mm -hmm. um, huh. I I'm not making the connection right now. Maybe it'll come back to me later. But okay. it does have something going on there. Mm -hmm. Um so Madori craft. So Madori, the mm -hmm. word, is I want to say a floor plan. Um it's basically like Here's a top-down view of what your apartment mm, will look like. Okay, and you yeah. Can see in the kind of bottom left portion of it, uh, you have something that swings, maybe, maybe a window. I don't Door, know. Door, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there's the toilet right by it. Oh, that's true. Well, maybe it's just like you know because there's a sink next to it, and then there's also yeah. like a bath. I think. Yes, there is a bath. That's the uh, the vertical looking one. Mm. Um, and then you have uh, the layout of the other parts of the room. So the closets, the entrance and such. Um, and in the top right part, uh, this is a very, very common thing in mm. Japanese apartments and homes. A tatami room. Ah, mm, I've slept the one. Yes. Uh, what, what is your opinion on the tatami room? So maybe to explain, so there's like these I guess, traditional rooms that are um, where there's a different kind of floor on the ground. These kind of like special tatami mats, right? Yes. And they're uh, expensive, I heard. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> they're also very hard to care for. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to get them dirty. <laughs> And it's it's like um, there, so when we we were sleeping at a at a kind of like a Airbnb kind of situation, mm -hmm. and um, so we had a tatami room, but it was like very we had to really take care of making sure that we not destroy the tatami mats. Yes. And so, for example, when we get, got our um, luggage in there, they had like a special corner that had mm -hmm. like a additional padding. Mm -hmm. like rubber padding where we we're supposed to put our luggage on because the luggage was not supposed to like stand on the tatami mats because the little plastic wheels might dig into the tatami mats and destroy them. Yep. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is the traditional room for sleeping, like mm -hmm. on futon. Well, mm -hmm. I won't say it's the traditional room, but this is the traditional type of flooring. Yeah. Um, and that's what people would sleep on. And it's supposed to be more comfortable than Ooh. other types of flooring uh, because it has a little bit more give to it. It's a little yeah. soft. Um, but if you don't like sleeping on the floor in general, you're probably not going to like sleeping on this floor either. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like it's, mm, um, <laughs> if, if, if you're not down with sleeping on the floor, you probably shouldn't give up until you tried the tatami floor, oh, because I that's probably it. the best the best floor to sleep on. I would say, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when I moved here this time, I slept on uh, I slept on uh, tatami flooring for probably about five months, and I have never had so much pain. <laughs> wow! Seriously? 
Yeah, it was bad for me. Like, I think my body shape is just not right for it. Wow, interesting. Weird, um, weird. I, had, I had a blast. Maybe, I mean, you will still have a futon between. You're not just sleeping on the floor. There's like a... Right, right, right. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me with my jacket. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> But I'm not turning on the heat, despite the fact that it's the middle of winter because I don't want my electricity bill to go up. <laughs> We're clear, creating a narrative here that sounds so. <laughs> oh my god! No, 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 no. There was, of course, a futon, and there are different types of futon that you can get. Mine was admittedly not so good. Maybe um, it's a futon that's what is the problem. It could be. It's very possible. Um, but there are some that are thicker. Um, that will get you a little bit closer to what you would expect from a, a regular bed. Mm. I have to say, like something that was confusing about these tatami kind of things was um, there's not a lot of furniture around. Mm, you, yes, you cannot actually have too much furniture in this kind of room because the floor is so so. Uh, um, um, yeah, it could be damaged. So yeah. it was, and you live on the floor. You just sit every. There's no like chairs or anything. You just sit there on the floor, and. That's a very different way of living than what you're used to from in the West. And, and that took some, it's, it was weird. Okay. So in this type of setup, if I'm reading this room correctly, I'm thinking the ones with the vertical lines are also potential bedrooms. Maybe this is kind of yeah. a weird layout to say the least. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe that's the point. Like you have to like get a, like a weird layout of a of a flat, and you're trying to make sense of it by putting furniture <laughs> inside. So uh, in general, this game seems to be about all about um, planning, floor planning, and I really like the. I mean, obviously the font looks like Minecraft, so it's it's supposed to kind of like evoke this idea that you're creating floors, but not out of cubes, but out of actual realistic uh, floor planning materials. Yeah. Yeah, and fitting everything to a rectangular grid. Is, isn't that a big of a... That seems like a very big flat for Japanese standards. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with the toilet, really. <laughs> like, bugging me. I keep looking at it like, why are you all the way over there? How do the other places fit in next to this? I, I think the toilet is just like the toilet, and the thing next to it is just a door that you can just install because none of the rooms are connected to each other. So you would have to like install doors between the rooms to like figure out how to get from one room to another. Right. You know, because I think you're right because right at the entrance. Um, so if you look at uh, the title, there is a door at the entrance and you go a little to the right, there's that little kanji in that tiny little room there. Right. Yeah. That's the Genkan. That's the entrance. Yeah. And it has That's a you put your shoes. There, just like behind the toilet. So what do you do? Yeah. Do you open the door to the toilet from outside, step over the toilet, lift up the seat, and then sit? <laughs> How does this work? No, How you, you, you mean you, you're talking about the uh, elements underneath the Midori Craft logo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I think the way this is supposed to work is these are this is like your toolbox, and you're supposed to drag and drop them into the floor plan. That is a much more reasonable interpretation. I think I figured it out. I think th this is my theory. I'm going to stick to it and we're going <laughs> to figure it out. I was like, wow, they're going to put the toilet right there, a, a, a door there. They're going to put a washing machine here, well, give it a bath. Why is everything on the outside? <laughs> but you know, see, if this game, if you are allowed to do that, it's, you could actually put, install a toilet light right into your, um, into your kitchen. Why not? Like, see oh what God. happens. Put the toilet in, into the tatami room. Oh. <laughs> oh, the horror. Oh, the horror. Moving on. <laughs> so next one is going to be 145. All right. So this is going to be Legend of Ketsuago. And I, mm, we've been talking about this a little bit. It seems to be one of your favorites this year. <laughs> it definitely took me by surprise. It doesn't look like much. <laughs> well, <laughs> until you figure out what it's really saying. Yes. Um, so to jump right into it, this is actually the legend of butt chin. <laughs> Ketsu meaning butt and ago meaning chin. We have the legend of butt chin and our two protagonists here with their water guns <laughs> and their pronounced butt chins. <laughs> They, uh, they, they, the chins are, uh, 
They, yes, they are very pronounced. They're, they have a lot of curves. Real chinness have curves. Yes. Right, cool. Is that a term that you talk to? Like, is that is that something you would say in in, in Japan? Like, oh, you have a butt butt chin. Um, What's wrong? What's up with I, the butt chin? I've never heard someone say this out loud. I cannot okay. imagine that this is appropriate okay. conversation. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Everybody's but, too polite to point out your butt chin. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the description is even better because it's talking about the year 2099, you know, somebody's coming, maybe some aliens or something. And <laughs> the day before, all of a sudden, these people get these special powers and it's these, these people with butt chins. <laughs> and it's the the chosen five, they decide, or they, uh, uh, what's the word? They decide they are going to fight decide. back against these alien guys or whatever. <laughs> They're going to use the special powers and save the earth. It's good. It's good. The legend of Butchin. The legend of Butchin. So you have to really, with this game, you have to come up with some kind of Butchin based gameplay, I think. I think if you just leave it. Uh, like if you don't mention the button, I think that would be a, a loss. You so we have to figure out some button based superpowers. Yeah, maybe you can like like sit down on your chin or something. Is that a superpower? I don't know. We can figure it out. It's, <laughs> it's you know we're running out of ideas. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has run its course. We have to come up with some fresh superheroes, right? All right, the the chins change size. And as they change size, they get big enough to crush their enemies. See, that's yeah. Maybe they grow like, and then they can stomp the enemies like a like, mm -hmm. like something that is big and stomps enemies. Or they both, you know, enlarge their chins and then you know press them against one person from each side and capture mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can uh, twerk with their chins and then oh. hypnotize enemies. Maybe that's why they're sweating because they're they're so tired because they've been uh, twerking all day. Maybe that's why I can't look away from this picture. <laughs> <laughs> the sweating really adds a lot to to this. It's good. It's good stuff. It's all right, moving on to the next one because this is going to be this is something I really wanted to talk about because I tried to put this into the Google translation and it, it complete it's just like exploded <laughs> almost in my face. It's like what I don't know what what we're talking about. So I cannot even I cannot I cannot even say what it's what it's what the name is of this thing. Okay, it's let me let me teach you about how to read. <laughs> Tell this. me, sensei. Okay, I'm going into sensei mode here. Okay. I have no freaking clue. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you, Sensei. <laughs> You're welcome, student. This is actually just garbled text. Mm. Uh, so like when you go, mm, this used to happen a lot more in you know the olden days, like 10 years ago. <laughs> um, when you'd be on the internet and you'd go to a website that was in you know, Japanese or something, and you would just see these random symbols. Uh -huh. And it wouldn't really look like it was supposed to look like that. And this is basically that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So like a corrupted file name, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so all the text has been garbled. Um, yeah, this takes place like a few hundred years in the future. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go through the whole description, uh, but basically you got your your goal is to uh, return the 50 uh, hiragana characters. Mm. You got to get them back. Mm. Um, there aren't, uh, there's not a lot of time left uh, before world's destroyed, et cetera, et cetera. Garbled text, garbled text, garbled text. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and then it ends with like, if you can get all of them back, maybe you'll be able to see the real title of the game. Ah, so you don't even know what a title of the game is because you don't even have the characters to read the title of the game. 
But mm-hmm. if you play through the game and you get back all of the characters that are missing, then you will be able to read the name of the game. And that's the secret. Mm-hmm. That's, that's such a good concept. I love it. Yeah. Um, we have to maybe explain it real quick. Um, so there's like three different um, types of um, alphabets in Japanese, so to speak. Mm-hmm. There is hiragana and katakana, which are both kind of like just the syllables. So it's yes. kind of like very similar to to like Western alphabet, where it's like a certain character uh, is associated with a certain sound. And then you combine the different sounds to spell out words. Um, but then there's also the, the favorite famous kanji characters, the, the Chinese characters, which are which there's thousands of. And then in these, uh, quite often, each um, character represents a... Um, um, a thing like a noun or a verb, right? Yeah, they're typically uh, like a picture of something or an idea, that kind of thing. And the confusing and the frustrating thing about learning Japanese is that uh, quite often texts combine all three. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> you cannot just like, learn one and stick with it. You have to learn all three. Mm-hmm. And quite often text is not really readable if you leave out one of those. <laughs> so the idea is that if you lose the, the kanji, the the, um, the um, the kana, the um, hiragana, hiragana. For that. katakana, you, yeah. yeah. Then you only have the kanji, and that's that makes the text unreadable. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's good. It's a good idea. It's very something very specific to Japan, but maybe like mm-hmm. somebody finds a good analogy to um, uh, to maybe do like Western adaptation of it. I think it would be. A, a, it's, it's, I, th- I find it fascinating to to have a game that changes the way you look at the game, where mm-hmm. you learn information within the game that maybe uh, feeds back to to how you perceive the game at, at, in, in general. It's good. I like this meta fourth wall breaking kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's, you know, knowing the background really makes me appreciate this card a lot more. It's it's because otherwise you just skip through it. I don't know. I cannot read it. But now, oof, it's good. And also the character, the garbled characters are, are really cool. Yeah. Fix, when I the the background. yeah, when I looked at the description finally, yeah. I was like, okay, this is actually amazing. All right, we're almost are wrapping up, but there's like something I want also want to to talk about. So this is going to be 152. This card. Uh, which I'm not really sure what the name is. We have to figure this out. This card um, was actually awarded um, as um, you know the, the best card of the show, basically by like a you know like a um, the people vo- who visited the exhibition voted, and they vote, voted this one as the best of the show this year. And I'm not sure what's happening here. Can you? Can you? Do you have any? Do you, what is what is this? Um. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed because I don't really know exactly what is going on here. Uh, um, but obviously, it's political satire. Um, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Okay, wait. Oh, no, my no, gosh, no, it's Trump. Trump. I know what I'm talking about. That's Trump. And that is uh, Abe Shinzo in the back. <gasps> the one with Holy people. crap. I, I just noticed. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about here. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, my guess is that, uh, Trump here is treated as, like, a, a, a demon. Oh, oh, really? You think is he, is he's, uh, he's shown a negative light here, yes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> they use a, a term in the description, maul. Um, uh-huh. which very literally is just devil, king. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like how he has two mouths. <laughs> he has this face mouth, mouth, mouth and then his stomach face as well. Yeah. Um, Red tie, very, very realistic. Um, oh, hey, there's a Statue of Liberty in the background. Yeah, in the White House, I think, right? Oh, of course. Of course, of course. Um, what, what, is the, what is the name of the game? Wakaimura. <laughs> I'm not really sure of the context here, so it's hard to know which word is accurate in this context. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, it could be reproachment, could be reconciliation, could be compromise. Ah, oh, compromise. Yeah, but that would make sense, baby, right? Possibly. <laughs> Because the translation, the Google translation, which obviously is going to be wrong, uh, is, is Settlement Village. Okay. Oh, okay. 
I was thinking of a different settlement. Um, mm -hmm. In that sense, uh, it's actually a legal term settlement. Ah, maybe that is what they're going for here. Okay, so so without going to any further details, it seems like it's a political um, allegory yeah. happening here, where um, where the good knight represented by uh, Japan's premier minister. Uh, I feel like the prime minister is actually in the top right. Oh, with the orange hair and blue skin. Oh, so so who's the knight? Is that just like a random protagonist? I'm trying to figure this out. I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, seems like political characters are, are <laughs> appearing as fantasy characters, and and uh, it's like a fantasy world where where characters are also political car caricatures. I understand now why this received the the, the award of the show, because be be without the context, I never realized that this was Trump. So without the context, it seems like some random. Okay, let's just like a guy shaking hands with a with a with a fantasy character. It's like okay, whatever. And then settlement <laughs> village it seems like okay, it's like settlers, you know, right? <laughs> but yeah. uh, and it seems like so settlement. It's maybe something about like nuclear treaties or something because there's like a rocket inside. Um, inside yeah, there. maybe it's about that. Um, I'm actually now noticing to the left of the little girl's head, it says Hall, probably mm. Hollywood. Yeah, 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 definitely. Just now seeing that. Yeah, yeah. There's like some. Uh, foreign invaders from from um from america and they're trying to appease the locals we're getting into very, very political territory here it um, it's uh it's uh, we've been recording for quite a while now and so this is going to be it for today um there's some more cars that we have some notes on but um we just can't cover all of them. It's just impossible. There's just so many cards, so many beautiful cards. But I hope this was interesting for you guys, interesting for you guys to check out. If you have any specific questions about a card that is in Japanese in, in the Famicos exhibition, please post in the comment sections and we might help you out understanding what is happening there. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's really fascinating that some of the cards you just glance over because you can't read them. But once you get into them, uh, I think you, you understand the, how, why they're here. And there's a lot of creativity that gets like lost in translation. So I think it's worthwhile just look, taking a closer look. Maybe just trying to translate it yourself, just like trying to understand what is happening here. Raiku, thank you so much for being with us here today. You are doing some streams uh, every now and then. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. Um, yeah, I stream on Twitch. Uh, so that's twitch.tv slash Ray of Raiku. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to post it to now. The end. Thank you. Now. Thank you. Um, yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of time to stream lately, but I'm hoping to get back into it soon. It's um, you've you had some you have a crazy Skyrim playthrough that I've been popping <laughs> every now and then. It's it was amazing. You had a child and you were playing hide and seek with it. It's, oh, it's good. Man. That was, mm, good, was good girl. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> hit very well once yes 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 so check out Raiko's stream and 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 his beautiful beautiful like, let's plays and hopefully uh we're gonna have another opportunity for you to join us in the future i would love that all right sweet so uh see you next time around guys not sure what exactly is gonna be in the next video probably not something about famicase anymore because we have to move on to 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 greener pastures see you next time around guys bye bye